Construction Equipment is one of the world's leading manufacturers of construction equipment. It develops, manufactures, and markets equipment for construction and related industries. It includes a comprehensive range of wheel loaders, hydraulic wheeled and crawler excavators, articulated haulers, road machinery, and a wide range of compact equipment. Along with the manufacturing of construction equipment, Volvo Construction also focuses on construction management. Overall, they are planning, coordinating, and controlling construction of a project from beginning to completion. The construction management team of Volvo specifies project objectives and plans including delineation of scope, budgeting, and scheduling. They implement various operations through proper coordination and control of planning, design, estimating, contracting, and construction in the entire process. As we know nowadays, in every sector, whether it's marketing or any information technology sector, everywhere a management team is required for proper functioning of that company. In such a scenario, is it possible for any construction equipment company to work without any management? And also, is it possible for them to beat their competitors in the market without the proper functioning of a management team? Hello students, and welcome to the lecture on construction equipment and management, where we will learn about the different types of construction equipment and also understand the management of that equipment. After the lecture, we will be able to learn the following objectives. Discuss planning and selection of construction equipment. Describe equipment management in projects. Understand safety management in construction. Discuss the choice of equipment and standard production rates. Understand how to organize construction tools. Define excavating and lifting equipment. Explain the types of heavy construction equipment. Let's start with a brief introduction to construction equipment and management. Construction equipment is one of the very important resources of modern day construction especially in infrastructure projects. Such projects utilize equipment for most of the work including building construction and other related construction. Let's now discuss the planning of equipment. An equipment planner is responsible for determining all of the needed equipment for a building, office, company, plant, or other place. The equipment planner works with construction crews, department heads, architects and designers to get what will be needed for a completed project. The equipment planner must not only plan what equipment will be needed within a building, but also locate and purchase the equipment. Let's now discuss the factors affecting the selection of construction equipment. Standard type of equipment. There's no such definition of standard type of equipment. An equipment may be standard to one contractor, but may not be to another. It depends on the operations of a contractor or company. Special equipment. One definition of special equipment is one that is manufactured for use on a single project or a special type of operation. Replacement of parts. One factor in the selection of branded equipment is the availability of replacement parts. When buying equipment, spare parts must readily be available or could easily be purchased. Cost of owning and operating construction equipment. There's no exact method of determining the probable cost of owning equipment. Carefully kept records should give information as a guide as to the type of equipment one needs to purchase. Economic life of construction equipment. The owner of the construction equipment should be interested in obtaining the lowest possible cost per unit of production. In order to accomplish this objective, he must follow an informed program of equipment replacement. How many years will he use his equipment? Sources of construction equipment. 
Contractors are frequently concerned about whether to purchase or lease construction equipment. Under certain conditions, it's financially advantageous to purchase, whereas under other conditions, it's more economical and satisfactory to rent it. Three methods by which a contractor may secure the use of equipment. Purchase, rent or lease agreement, and rent to own. Advantages of owning equipment. It's more economical if the equipment is used sufficiently. It is readily available or immediately at the disposal of the owner. It's better maintained and in better mechanical condition. Disadvantages of owning equipment. It's more expensive than renting. Substantial investment is required. The ownership may influence the contractor to continuously use the equipment in lieu of more modern equipment. Now let's talk about equipment management and projects. A successful project manager must effectively manage the resources assigned to the project. This includes the labor hours of the designers, builders, the testers, and the inspectors on the project team. It also includes managing any labor subcontracts. The equipment that has to be managed as part of the project depends on the nature of the project. A project to construct a frozen food warehouse would need earth moving equipment, cranes and cement trucks. The project management key for equipment is much like for people resources. The management of ongoing tasks requires a different approach to the management of one-off tasks. Project management is about getting these temporary endeavours complete on time and on budget. The sad truth is that for one reason or another, most projects fail to meet their objectives. So here's some weapons you can add to your arsenal to make sure your project has the best chance of success. Firstly, make sure all stakeholders agree in granular detail on the final outcome of the project. By agreeing about deliverables at the outset of a project, you'll guard against the scope growing monstrously out of control. Planning is 80% of project management. Remember the six P's. Proper planning prevents poor project performance. There's a lot of great tools that can help you keep track of your project. Use these during your planning. Before building your team, consider the skills and know-how you'll need to complete the project. Then compare that list with the people you have. Add and subtract people as necessary. Make sure you consider how information will flow where it is needed and that all stakeholders know what's happening. Prepare for stormy seas by considering what risks your project might be exposed to and plan how to best navigate to avoid or mitigate them. If you've planned properly, implementation of your project should be like conducting an orchestra, keeping the various players in check with clear, constant communication and leadership. After completing the project, report on what was done well and what could have been done better. This way your team will be better positioned to tackle their next project. Remember, anyone can complete a project by throwing more time and money at it. The real challenge is to achieve a quality outcome using the least time and money. To summarize, to make sure your project is completed on time, on budget, meeting its scope and in a quality manner, remember that planning is paramount. Fiercely guard against scope creep by getting solid agreement on the required deliverables. Make sure you know about and use available project management tools. Think about the skills your project needs before building your team. Think hard about what risks your project could face. Communicate like an orchestral conductor during implementation. And don't forget, review, reflect and report on your project's successes and shortcomings so your team learns from the experience. Working in the construction industry can sometimes be dangerous. Work-related accidents can cause serious injuries. However, most of these accidents are preventable. It's important to use resources to learn more about construction and safety and provide safety training including fall protection and hazard communication. Safety helmets, shoes, belts should be given to the workers to avoid the causes of injuries. Proper ventilation, lighting facilities, drinking water, and sanitary facilities should be provided to the labor. Ensure implementation of the law of the land with respect to safety and health. 
create a safe organization with health and first aid facilities. Incident and injury-free workplace. Adequate provision of fire prevention systems. No child labor, no smoking. Formation of a safety committee. Workers will be covered under an occupation accident policy. Monitoring of implementation. Responsibilities of a safety officer. Before commencing any work on a site, a safety officer is appointed who will ensure that the safety measures at the site are taken. The safety officer will perform safety rounds all over the site every day and advise the concerned supervisor regarding any unsafe act or condition and the remedial action required will be implemented. Safety trainings will be conducted to all workers and staff before they start their work, as well as at regular intervals. Those records of trainings will be maintained by the safety officer. Let's now explore the choice of equipment and standard production rates. Typically, construction equipment is used to perform essentially repetitive operations and can be broadly classified according to two basic functions. Operators such as cranes, graders, etc., which stay within the confines of the construction site, and haulers such as dump trucks, ready mixed concrete trucks, etc., which transport materials to and from the site. In both cases, the cycle of a piece of equipment is a sequence of tasks which is repeated to produce a unit of output. In excavation for building construction, for example, factors that could affect the selection of excavators include size of the job, larger volumes of excavation will require larger excavators or smaller excavators in a greater number, activity time constraints, shortage of time for excavation may force contractors to increase the size or numbers of equipment for activities related to excavation. Availability of equipment. Productivity of excavation activities will diminish if the equipment used to perform them is available, but not the most adequate. Cost of transportation of equipment. This cost depends on the size of the job, the distance of transportation, and the means of transportation. Type of excavation. Principal types of excavation in building projects are cut and or filled, excavation massive, and excavation for the elements of foundation. Construction tools and equipment are constantly being developed to make every stage of house building easier, quicker, cheaper, and safer. If one has decided to manage construction work, there will be some stages where one will need to arrange equipment or construction tools for work to progress. Hammers. A claw hammer is used in construction for driving in nails and pulling them out. Construction elements such as framing, light finishing, and demolition all call for the use of a quality hammer. Nail pullers. While one can use the claw hammer for pulling out nails, some construction workers prefer using a wrecking bar paw style bar. These nail pullers are far more useful for pulling out nails driven deeply into wood. Screwdrivers. A collection of various sizes of both flathead and Phillips screwdrivers is a necessity throughout a construction project. A selection of screwdrivers is much easier to carry around than a power drill, and these tools can be used for driving fasteners into wood, metal, or stone. Invest in a nut driver for turning hex head screws and bolts. Measuring squares. Construction work relies on accurate measurements that can be accomplished with a tool called a square. It takes precise measurements of right angles, while a combination square with a bevel gauge makes it easy to duplicate any kind of angle for transferring to a board that needs to be cut. Measuring tapes and rulers. Tapes and rulers are another kind of measuring tool vital for construction work. If the construction work is building a home, 
one can probably get by with just a 12 foot retractable steel tape measure, but go with a 30 foot tape for working on larger projects. Saws. Saws are used for cutting of lumber to be used in the framing process. Hand saws include the cross cut saw for making cuts across the wood grain and a drywall saw for cutting through plaster, gypsum, or wallboard. Let's now discuss excavating and lifting equipment. Excavation and earth moving plants. Advantages of using a mechanical plant in excavation are work is done quicker, avoiding dangerous conditions of work by human workers, for example, the existence of groundwater or collapsing of soil, achieve greater depth, use less manpower, and get the work done with a lower cost for larger scale work only. Disadvantages involves larger running and maintenance costs, requires a larger operating area, access provision to a working area, less flexible in work planning, idling time increases cost of work, brief description of plants, face shovel excavators. This can be cable or hydraulic operated, mounted on wheel or track. They are fitted with buckets which face away from the machine. Back actors or backhoe. These are used for below ground level excavation. The bucket acts downwards and drags towards the machine and tilts upwards to hold the loads. Bulldozers. They are traditionally track mounted tractors with significant weight so that they can work easier with soil. Tractor shovel, loading shovel. This machine is similar to a bulldozer but has a hydraulic operated bucket in place of the blade. Materials above the base of the vehicle can be lifted and unloaded onto a dump truck or onto a spoil heap. Clamshell excavator. This is somewhat a crane, usually track mounted, and hangs a wire operated clamshell at the jig. It's used to handle or load soft or saturated soil on site. It's more useful in a very big site where a large amount of soil materials needs to be removed. Powered shovel or drill. This is for cutting of larger boulders or rock. Usually the drill is pneumatically operated and mounted on a tracked base. Grader. It can be a self-contained power unit or a towed vehicle by a tractor. A grader does not excavate, but it levels and grades out to find, loose, or deposit materials. A centrally mounted blade, which is much narrower and flatter than a bulldozer, serves the purpose. Scraper. The machine works similarly to a grader, but it has a container to hold the surplus soil after the scraper. The container, which is filled with soil, can also serve the purpose of backfilling hollow ground. Dumper. This is a smaller vehicle with a tipping hopper or skip designed to carry material within a site. The hopper is usually front mounted to provide better control by the driver. Many different types of heavy construction equipment exist, so the list of all the different types would be quite extensive. These pieces of heavy construction equipment are generally designed to move large amounts of earth or other materials. Skid steer. First of all, skid steers are a general term that describe a variety of equipment that are all characterized by a specific type of steering called skid steering. A skid steer is maneuvered through a system of braking and engaging the tracks or wheels on one side of the vehicle. Crane. The crane is another popular piece of construction equipment that's mainly used for deconstruction. Cranes are operated by a series of cables that lower and lift materials and are mainly used on projects dealing with temporary structures. Backhoe loader. A backhoe loader is a type of construction equipment that has a front bucket or shovel and a small backhoe in the rear. And the entire piece of equipment is combined with a tractor. 
A backhoe loader has a comparatively small frame which allows the driver to have more control over its movement. Crawler. The crawler is another type of construction vehicle and it's also called a bulldozer, as are all heavy engineering vehicles. A crawler is essentially a tractor that has a dozer blade attached to it. Crawlers are powerful vehicles commonly used for a variety of bigger construction projects. Loader. A loader is another type of vehicle that's also known as a bucket loader, front end loader, scoop loader, or front loader. Forklift. A forklift is a high powered vehicle used to lift and transport heavy items and materials. Forklifts come in many varieties of sizes and load capacities. The majority of forklifts are not used in construction projects, but rather in manufacturing facilities or warehouses that require frequent lifting and transporting of heavy materials. Road roller. A road roller is also known as a roller compactor and is used mainly in road construction, but can be used for a variety of other purposes, including compacting soil, gravel, concrete, or asphalt. In some parts of the world, road rollers are commonly known as steamrollers. Road rollers are commonly used with pavers that are used to spread asphalt on roadways. Motorized cultivator. A motorized cultivator is a piece of equipment commonly used for farm work. Motorized cultivators have rotating blades called rotary tillers that work in the soil. Did you know the use of heavy equipment has a long history? The ancient Roman engineer Vitruvius, 1st century BCE, gave descriptions of heavy equipment and cranes in ancient Rome in his Treatise to Architecture. Now in the end, let us summarize what we have learned in this lecture. Construction equipment is one of the very important resources of modern day construction, especially in infrastructure projects. An equipment planner is responsible for determining all needed equipment for a building, office, company, plant, or other place. Earth moving and mining equipment has been designed primarily to move earth and minerals in large earth moving and mining projects. Construction tools and equipment are constantly being developed in order to make every stage of house building easier, quicker, cheaper, and safer. Underground mining equipment is aimed at moving material in a very headroom and space environment.